Welcome everyone to Mayo Clinic q and I'm Dr. Sanj Kapkar. Public health experts are urging people to get their flu vaccine this year, as it's doubly important given the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. An annual flu vaccine is recommended for everyone aged six months and older every year, especially this year. Pediatricians and family physicians are also warning parents that it's important to keep their children up to date on other routine vaccinations as well. Here to discuss this today with us is Mayo Clinic pediatrician, Dr. Robert Jacobson. Dr. Jacobson, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. I'm delighted to speak on such an important topic. As you said, Dr. Jacobson, it is really important, especially as we're getting into the sort of winter season. Why is it especially important to vaccinate kids, not only routinely, but especially this year? We've had a number of difficult with, uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic that actually resulted in children missing months of well-child visits in which routine vaccines were given. Furthermore, the pandemic has really shuttered down parents' use of the clinic for routine care. Uh, and for those reasons, uh, a, a lot of parents have found themselves with children behind in vaccines, not really aware that their children are behind in vaccines. Uh, uh, they might have in March or April skipped the uh, 12 month visit with the measles, mumps, rubella, and chickenpox vaccine and the first hepatitis A vaccine. And then they might have uh, still felt nervous in June about uh, uh, the 15 month well child visit. And they're suddenly behind in diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, polio, the haemophilus influenza, pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. Uh, this is happening all over the country. That means we're developing pockets of reduced immunity for these vaccine preventable diseases. That means that those outbreaks are more likely to spread because of that decreased herd immunity. So that's an alarming situation that every parent can take part in solving by uh, seeking out the preventive care their children needs. For example, at Mayo Clinic, we've sent letters and communications to parents reminding them that those preventive services are just as, if not more important during the pandemic times, and that we need them to make appointments and bring their children in. Now, parents may say, well, you know, my kids are staying home and they're being schooled virtually, so is it important to get vaccinations this year then? Especially so. For some of our vaccines don't have any herd immunity. For example, tetanus or lockjaw, uh, there's nothing that about staying at home that reduces your uh, risk of tetanus or lockjaw. You can get it from uh, a, a cut, a puncture wound that happens in the house or in the backyard, um, and all the vaccinated people all around you won't reduce your child's chance of getting tetanus or lockjaw. Other diseases uh, travel uh, uh, it's from healthy child to healthy child, may be carried just in the lining of their nose. Um, and, uh, and while a, a play date outside seemed innocent enough, young children may violate social distancing and incidentally touch each other and spread germs that we controlled with vaccines uh, that are no longer controlled because people failed to get their well child care. So as you know, now we're entering the flu season. And can you talk to us about the flu, the symptoms of the flu? And there's a little bit of uh, uh, confusion, obviously, with uh, COVID-19 as well, the symptoms of COVID-19. So can we talk a little bit about that and your experience about the symptoms? Most of us have heard by now that the COVID-19 virus can present, often presents with a fever and a cough. Well, that's how over half the cases of flu present, with a fever or a cough. That means that uh, as the flu begins to circulate this fall and this winter across our country, we're going to have a lot of parents, a lot of adults, a lot of nurses, and a lot of doctors questioning, is that the flu or is that COVID-19? And frankly, you can't tell. Um, uh, COVID-19 can start innocently enough, and while it's far more likely uh, to send a, an adult to the hospital or leave that adult uh, with persistent symptoms, um, children can get COVID-19 and often be asymptomatic and spread it to adults just the way flu can. 
And so we have this range of early symptoms with COVID-19 and flu that look very similar, though the diseases may end up behaving very differently. We've got to prevent that confusion. We've got to do everything we can to prevent that confusion. And right now we can, with the flu, prevent it by getting the flu vaccine. And not just our children, but every one of us, every one of us in the household. And everyone's due for the flu vaccine every year. Uh, even the children born less than six months of age now will become six months of age during the flu season and should get their vaccines. When we talk about the flu vaccine, many people push it up towards the winter. What are you advising this year? We should get everyone vaccinated before the flu season starts in their region. For example, in Minnesota, we're talking, we need everyone vaccinated before December 1st. That's hard work uh, because everyone went into the season unvaccinated. The ACIP, or Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, a group of experts organized from around the country to advise us on vaccine recommendations, has said this year, we should take care to get it in September or October and uh, avoid getting it too early in July or August. Now here we are in September. I think we just need to do what we can to here in Minnesota to get before December 1st. Other parts of the country, it actually starts even earlier. And the, uh, the, uh, the burden is on uh, healthcare organizations in that area to start vaccinating even before October so that they can get all those doses in. So if we're doing it earlier, is there a chance that it could wear off? Well, that's the concern with a July or, or August vaccination. Uh, there have been some studies, not consistently, uh, that have shown some age groups, not consistently, but primarily among uh, older adults, 65 years and older, that there might be waning, and that waning might uh, occur in April, May, or June if you get it as early as July or August. And here in Minnesota, we typically continue to see flu outbreaks in April and May. And so it would be a problem for those groups to have gotten their vaccine too early. Now, it's better to get it than not get it. And previous recommendations said, well, just get it now, uh, even if it's July or August, so you don't forget to get it later on. For the first time now, experts at the ACIP are writing that, let's focus on getting it in September and October. Uh, Mayo will be rolling out its vaccine here in Minnesota for its employees and patients uh, starting mid-October. It takes a great deal of effort for us to organize the tens of thousands of doses that we're going to need to do. Uh, we, like many other healthcare organizations, are working to develop centralized, safe, locations where patients can get their vaccine in person without putting themselves at risk for COVID-19. Yeah, thank you for uh, explaining that because that was one of the other questions that I had. Typically, when you get your flu sh uh, vaccine, you go into the doctor's office and get it, but many people would want to sort of do it uh, in groups, for example, their family. So can you tell us some of the initiatives that uh, Mayo Clinic is working on to do that? We love the idea of a household getting the vaccine together. Um, and yet we also need to respect social distancing and masking. So we've created non-clinical areas for nurses trained in giving the flu vaccine to give it in a location where sick people are not being seen, where families, where households can uh, uh, come up to the clinic on a scheduled appointment basis, uh, get in a line where every group is six feet or more apart, everyone wearing masks, everyone practicing a safe COVID-19 behaviors, go through, get the vaccine, get it documented, and go home uh, without much ado. Now, in terms of the vaccination, there's, there's different types, correct, for the flu. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about them and um, sort of pros and cons between, for example, the injection versus the mist? This year, as in previous years, we will have the flu mist, which is a brand of nasal spray. It's a live attenuated flu virus vaccine uh, that's sprayed with a, a tiny amount in each nostril. This is a great alternative to the flu vaccine. For those people who are eligible, Mayo Clinic recommends um, either the injectable 
or the nasal spray. Um, it is uh, designed for people two years through 49 years of age. It provides uh, coverage for all four strains, just as the injectable does. It, um, however, is a live vaccine. And because it's a live vaccine, uh, we don't take risks with pregnant persons. We don't take risks with the immunocompromised. And in fact, because the studies were only done in healthy adults and children who lacked risk factors for the flu vaccine, uh, we can only confidently speak to how well this vaccine works and how safe it is in those people who don't have those risk factors. And so indeed, the flu mist is not for everyone. Uh, there's a number of people who have conditions that make them ineligible for it. But for those who are eligible, go ahead, get it. Uh, avoid the needle, avoid the, the, the pain. Um, uh, take advantage of that. Now, the injectable comes in two major types. That is, we have a type that's good for children from six months through 64 years of age. And it's starting at 65 years of age, um, uh, here at MayOS, as providers do across the country, we have vaccines that are especially designed for those 65 years and older. The vaccine that we'll be using actually has four times the amount of antigen in it for each of the four strains. Uh, and so those adults 65 years and older are, are much more likely to get a much higher antibody response. And studies have shown that this is is much more effective in reducing flu uh, preventable disease and, and flu caused hospitalization. So we use that special vaccine for those 65 years and older. And that's some really important information and I appreciate you sharing that with us today. Anything else you'd like to add? I just want everyone to know that they can play a major role in this pandemic in addition to masking, social distancing, hand washing, avoiding touching your face unless you've just washed your hands with soap and water, and also get the flu vaccine. Get the flu vaccine now in preparation for reducing COVID-19-like symptoms. Uh, decrease the confusion, protect your loved ones, protect yourself. We've been discussing the importance of routine vaccinations, including the flu vaccine with Mayo Clinic pediatrician, Dr. Robert Jacobson. Dr. Jacobson, thanks so much for joining us today. Mayo Clinic Q&A is a production of the Mayo Clinic News Network and is available wherever you get and subscribe to your favorite podcasts. To see a list of all Mayo Clinic podcasts, visit newsnetwork.mayoclinic.org, then click on podcasts. We hope you'll offer a review of this and other episodes when the option is available. Comments and questions can also be sent to Mayo Clinic News Network at mayo.edu.